after spending a fabulous three weeks in Rodney Bay, St Lucia, it was time to start heading further south. So with Annie at the helm, we were off. It was a very slow start for us as we sailed down the west coast of St Lucia, but two dolphins still showed up to say hi. Eventually, the pitons came into view as we were followed by our buddy boat, the Australian flag catch, Neptune 2. Under sail, we were a little bit faster, but under motor, they left us in their wake. The two volcanic spires of the Pitons stretch up almost 800 metres on one and almost 750 metres on the second really stand out on this landscape. We always find it amazing what the tide can do during a passage. As we left Rodney Bay, we had almost one knot of current running with us. And as we approached this location, we had about two knots running against us, complete with whirlpools. Once we entered the bay, the current dropped out. We were in totally sheltered water. We meet some traffic on the water. As we enter the bay, a Dominican flag sloop was leaving. up a mooring for the night. Neptune 2 picked up a mooring right alongside. The pitons being so much higher than anything else create their own weather system. It was not the prettiest weather to be departing in. We slipped our mooring with Annie at the helm. Southward we go. noticed as we cleared the bay, looking back we could see the Levante cloud hanging over the pitons, causing the condensation to fall as rain. We also noticed a fast approaching squall line. It did not take long and the squall caught up, causing it to be a little wet up top, but gave us some really good boat speed. We were soon sliding along at eight to nine knots.
Annie winding in the catch of the day. Another lovely big bunch of sagassum hooked up on the lure. Over 10 knots. With the really good boat speed, it didn't take long and we were soon on the west side of the island of St Vincent. Almost every time we saw another sail up ahead, it was game on. It was regatta time. I did hear Annie say, hold my beer, I've got this. This photo was taken by some crazy guy well offshore in his dinghy. To give you an idea how far out we were from Beckway, that is it well up ahead. We drop anchor in Port Elizabeth, Beckway in the middle of the afternoon. Just to be sure the anchor is set properly, I go for a swing. The snubber line looks good. I can hardly see the roll bar on our Manta 65 as our anchor is almost completely buried. On the way back to Anacam, I spot this cute little fella, way down on the bottom. It was amazing to watch him as he slowly came up to say hi. We picked up Gary off our buddy boat, Neptune 2, and headed in to town to find the Customs and Immigration Office so we could complete our clearance into St Vincent and the Grenadines. The water was a lovely 29 degrees C, so we decided we would both have a swim into the beach. After spending a bit of time giving some sand between the toes and almost everywhere else, we swam back out to Anacam. Beautiful warm water, we spent a lot of time swimming. The Fig Tree, beachside restaurant and bar, is one of our favourite locations, and this time we were in there for Fish Friday. There were lots of other cruisers coming in in their dinghies 
all to share in the Fish Friday. The first one to come in behind us was Mariah. And here come some of the boat kids. The crazy cruisers sharing our table would be Gary, Vanessa, Mark, Steve, John, and this would be Mariah, Annie, and Captain Krusty. Hey, the party's getting a little rough when Mark tries to slam a kiss on Kim. Steve and Mark. Haha, <laughs> no way guys. How about Steve and Sue? How about Vanessa and Gary? So not to be left out, Annie and Captain Krusty. We stop to say hi to Lisa, Lynn and Marty on the next table. I was just videoing some of the action out on the dance floor when our beautiful hostess, Cheryl, cornered me for a dance. Even one of the waitresses got up with the kids. After our lovely evening in at the fig tree, we jumped in the canna the next day to go and explore Port Elizabeth. We secured our dinghy out near the fig tree and made the long walk into town. We found this place to be very clean, neat and tidy. We were looking for a location to sit down and have some lunch. And after a bit of a search, we found Maria's, overlooking the beautiful harbour. And while we were there, there was a 6.4 earthquake out towards Barbados that got the whole building rocking. After a lovely lunch, we decided we would keep on going to explore some more. found everybody here quite friendly. The two-storey white building just on the corner of this next intersection was the location where we found Customs and Immigration to conduct our clearance when we came in.
up in the residential part of the town, we found this very quaint little supermarket that was run by, we think, was an Indian woman. Almost in the middle of nowhere, but she had absolutely everything one could wish for. A couple of days later, we jumped in McKenna to head into the beach for some sundowners, and we caught up with a whole bunch of like-minded cruisers. Music on the beach with Vanessa on guitar and the sax machine, Gary. <laughs> Just about everybody was enjoying their sundowners in the beautiful warm water. Millie, the beautiful chocolate lab belonging to Melissa and Marty of their catamaran True Colours. We finished sundowners early on this evening as we were heading back out to Anacanton to make things ready for the car stop tomorrow to head further south. We will always love our time here in Begway. Beautiful island, beautiful people, warm water. We decided we might come back again to spend Christmas here. As we head back to our beautiful yacht Anna Cam, thank you very much for watching this video and tune in again for our next episode as we sail further south for the hurricane season.